day, everyone. My name is Damon Simeon. I'm here with your at your broadcast commentator between the matchup today between the St. Louis Gladiators and the Chicago Wildcats. Here's your week one SFL matchup. Let's get ready for some football. Here we are set for the coin toss. Wildcats has won the wild has won the toss. They chose the kick. The St. Louis Gladiators will receive the ball first. <clears throat> Chicago Wildcats are in all black white helmets. Gladiators are in white jerseys. As they are away, here's the kick, and it is off. Here's the return on the on the play here out to the 26-yard line. Return on the play by Tito Moss there. I take that back. Chicago is in gray helmets, not white. <clears throat> here's your quarterback for the uh, St. Louis Gladiators. Ethan Alexander comes out. Looks like he's audibing the play here on the first play of the drive, or of the game, should I say. They're out in a uh, power eye formation. Here's a handoff here to tell that He's popped and smacked around after picking up two yards on the play there by 55. Brett Tilius of the Wildcats. And the ball carrier for the St. Louis Gladiators was Denzel Diaz. Second and eight for the St. Louis Gladiators. They come out in the power eye formation once again. Chicago is in a 4-3 formation. There's a handoff to the halfback once more, and he's stopped in the backfield once again. This time by Clint Hendershot, the veteran, 6'4", 235 pounds. Hendershot is a mean, tough guy who plays at the outside linebacker position for the uh, Wildcats, that is. <clears throat> Is a five-step drop there by Alexander. Pass is bounced around and tipped. Almost intercepted by the or almost intercepted that is by the Wildcats. Diaz could not keep a hand on the ball as he was wide open in the flats. That settles for 14 and 11 for the Gladiators. Now they have to punt the ball away. Please in the chat let me know how the sound is. Do I need to Increase the game volume or decrease the commentator volume. Here's a snap for the punt. The ball is up in the air. There's a return there, and it looks like the return only picks up one yard. It looks like Kanye Rockefeller on the return there. Now the Chicago Wildcats have the ball at their own 25, I'm sorry, at their own 38-yard line, that is. E.T. King is the quarterback for the Chicago Wildcats. They come out in a pro set, three wide receiver formation. Split back, there's a handoff there to the running back. Number 20, he bounces and he got room. He gets the first down. J. Calvin Kim, the veteran running back there who came over from Tallahassee last season. Uh, Joe, J. Calvin Kim sits at 5'11", 225. Chicago comes out in another three wide receiver set. This time they're in the I formation and not the split. St. Louis Gladiators in the 3-4 formation. There's a three-step drop there by E.T. King. 
Pass out to the fullback. He picks up maybe about six, seven yards on the play. Seven, that is. Second and three for Chicago Wildcats. And the fullback there on the play. They have the fullback at 46, but on my prompter, he's 36. Alfonso Freedy, that is. Second and three for the Chicago Wildcats. They come out in a single back formation wing set. A.T. King on a five-step drop. Swing pass out to J. Calvin Cameron. He picks up a first down on the plate and plenty more afterwards. He's tackled by 31 of the Gladiators, which is Nick Dads. Nice catch there by the strong safety coming up and making the tackle there and saving a gain of yards by E.T. I'm sorry, J. Calvin Kim on that play because he had plenty of room if he would have missed that tackle. Here's a shotgun formation by E.T. King. Empty formation. Looks like it's an incomplete pass as he caught the ball out of bounds there. And Zilli, number 84 on the reception, could not stay in bounds. Second and 10 for the Chicago Wildcats. Gladiators here coming into town looking to upset the Wildcats. The Wildcats was the runner-up in the SFL Championship last season, losing to the Mexico City Aztecs. Single bag wing formation once again for the Wildcats here. E.T. King underneath the center. Five-step drop formation. Another swing pass to J. Calvin Kim. There's a penalty on the play. He's tapped. have to pick it up three, four yards on the play. But let's see what the penalty is. There's a holding. Holding on 69 offense. And 69 would be Brandon Aswork. That is. Second and 20, that is, for the Chicago Wildcats. They come out in a four wide receiver set. Empty formation. It's a shotgun. Looks like the oop the oop. There's a pump fake by King. Out pass to the wide receiver. To the top of the screen, that is. He picks up four yards on the play. And that reception was brought in by Davies Reed. Great reception there. He was wide open. His corner was not in sight. Another look there at Reed. Empty formation once again. Five, five wide receiver set that is for Chicago this time. And there's a two-step drop there by King. He's going deep down the field. His receiver was out of bounds, but that's an INT on the play by the St. Louis Gladiators. And the reception on the INT is Freeman Paltier, that is. Peltier, sorry about that. The receiver went out of bounds and came back in. If he would have caught that, he still would have been. Um, an illegal touch by the receiver for going out of bounds because he was not forced out of bounds by the defender. He went out of bounds on his own. Great defensive play there by Freeman. Uh, Piltier, that is. Now the St. Louis Gladiators has come away with the ball. They're at their own 17-yard lines in a eye formation 2 wide receiver set. Here's a seven-step drop by the quarterback. There's a reception on the play, first down. Ethan Alexander with the pass to Elijah Swam. That is nice step, nice seven-step drop play here by Alexander, and a great catch by the receiver as well. Elijah Swam is the tight end and not the wide receiver for the St. Louis Gladiators. They come in with two wide receivers, which is Tristan Jones and Cody Scott, who are the receivers. The starting wide receivers is a three. I'm sorry, seven. A five-step drop there by Alexander when he swing pass out to the running back. And he picks up three yards on the play. Denzel Diaz, that is. Looks like a short guy playing the running back position. Looks like he's probably about 5'9", 5'10", that is. Eye formation, that is, for the St. Louis Gladiators. One wide receiver out. Hand off to Diaz, and he's blowed up in the backfield. Tackled by... Clint Hendershot is 6'4", 235. And Hendershot is a tall guy for an outside linebacker who knows how to cover the field sideline to sideline. Great play. Play, 
three wide receiver in a split back formation for Alexander. One step drop going across the middle of the field. That was a dangerous pass. Almost intercepted by Clint Hendershot as he waves, waves his arms back and forward. Not happening. Not happening here today. Fourth and eight for the St. Louis Gladiators. They have to punt this ball away as they was unable to pick up the second first down on the drive. Now they're going to get the ball right back to the Chicago Wildcats, which is a dangerous team. Chicago knows how to put points on the board really fast, as we saw them do last year. And here's the punt. And that return guy, Kanye Rockefeller, was hit really hard on that return there. Let me know, is the sound better, folks, out there in the chats? <laughs> Chicago comes out in a split back, three wide receiver formation once again. E.T. King underneath the center this time, and I get shotgun. Here's a handoff to Jake Allen Kim, who picks up a first down on that carry and pulled a guy with him as he ran across the first down line. Jake Allen Kim, that is, kept his legs moving and trucking. Here's a, here's a replay here as we look back at it. It's like it's just pretty much a uh, pro set. Not a pro set, I'm sorry. A uh, trap, that is. And he picks up and he was untouched until he got to this, uh, almost the secondary. Right. Chicago comes out in a strong formation with one wide receiver and it looks like they have about three tight ends on the play on formation here is a handoff to Jake Kevin Kim outside and bounce right back inside picks up three yards but he's hit before he can get anywhere anywhere else by Freeman Pelter that is on the tackle nice way coming up from that uh, free safety spot to get in the trenches there and make the tackle it looks like Jake Kevin Kim was going to pretty much pick up some yards if uh, Freeman was not able to come up with that tackle Here's a two-step drop by King out to J. Calvin Kim. Kim picks up seven yards on the play there, and he's routed and tackled down to the ground. And one of the defensive linemen, which is Bo Nose for the St. Louis Gladiators. I like that name, Bo Nose, and that's K-N-O-L. K-N-O-W-L-E-S, that is. Chicago Wildcats comes out in a foreign formation. Three wide receivers set. E.T. King underneath the center takes a three-step drop. He looks, has a man open. There's a fumble on the play. That looks like an incomplete pass, and it's picked up. And he's taking it at the 40, 30, 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, St. Louis Gladiators. But I'm pretty sure that this is going to be reviewed and maybe brought back, um, maybe will be called back. Because it doesn't look like the receiver caught the ball and had full possession and made a football move. Here's another look at it as Colin Douglas was the one who picked it up. There's the catch and the fumble. Yeah, it looks like he did not have full possession there on the play. And Colin Douglas picked it up and continued uh, and kept the play alive and taking it to the house there. As, as of right now, it's 6-0 St. Louis Gladiators over the Chicago Wildcats who are at home here in the new stadium. And there's a challenge on the play there by Chicago. I wasn't surprised that they challenged this play because it does not, it didn't look as if the receiver had full possession um, of the ball and he did not make the football move. Here's another look at it. Yeah, as soon as the ball hit his hand, it came out. That's pretty much an incomplete pass in my book, if you ask me. But who knows, here in the SFL and the referees, they seem to make some crazy turnaround calls. So let's see if this call is is upheld or overturned. And here we have the referee. And the turn, the, looks like the play is overturned. Looks like I was right, folks. As a look at Denzel Diaz as Chicago gets ready to punt the ball away. There's the punt. If the receiver was able to keep it to uh, make the, the 
reception on that catch. He could have had the first down. And there's a bounce there. It takes a Wildcats bounce. And the ball is at the St. Louis Gladiators four-yard line. And number 23, that is Brandon Bassey, picks up the ball uh, on that special teams play there. He got down the field. He was the first one down there. And he watched it bounce. And he picks it up. <clears throat> Great play there by the special teams of Chicago. Folks, there was a lot of great games earlier today of SFL action. Games that was went down to the wire and games that there was some, some blowouts. But there were some great games. I do advise you to go back and take a look at those games on the SFL YouTube channel. Here's a handoff here to Diaz of St. Louis. He picks up one yard. Now they're second and nine at the St. Louis five-yard line. And big number seven, one Kevin Owens on the tackle, the defensive tackle, that is, uh, for the Chicago Wildcats. High formation, tight, that is, Diaz making men move, uh, making, men, uh, making men miss on the juke move there, picks up four yards on the play. And now it is third and three, that is, for the St. Louis Gladiators. St. Louis Gladiators is looking to have a turnaround season here as they have missed the playoffs for the first two seasons of the SFL. And Chicago Wildcats were last season was their inaugural season. They made it to the championship. One of many teams to do so. Which, uh, here's a pass across the middle there by the tight to the tight end of St. Louis. Looks like number 46 that is on the reception, and that is tight end Charlie Northrup on the reception. Great catch there by Northrup. Northrup, that is. Sorry about that, Northrup. Here's a handout to Diaz. He's up the middle. He got blockers. And he picks up four, six, six yards. There it is on the play. Nice uh, uh, run there by Diaz on the play there to keep the, 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 the chains moving, that is. Uh, Diaz is a nice and small, swifty guy. Kind of reminds me of uh, Parky Chu. Uh, back for the uh, New York Knights. <laughs> uh, Para I formation, that is, once again, for the St. Louis Gladiators. Here's another handoff to Diaz. He's he, uh, uh, gets small and picks up two yards on the plate, third and one. Diaz is a small guy. He's hard to see over the tall offensive linemen as he's brought down by 51. Ajuma Afolabi. Afolabi is a really big guy, 6'5", 250 pounds, playing the outside linebacker position for Chicago. Here's another handoff to Diaz. The spin move. Oh, it looks like he come up inches short before making the first down. Hit by, once again, Clint Hendershot. Hendershot, Hendershot has been all over the field today, uh, uh, just tracking down Diaz and making tackles. Looks like St. Louis is not going to go for it. They bring out the punt team, fourth and inches. Uh, they're not going to take chances here in the first quarter and go for that and give Chicago a great field position. And here's the punt. Oh, yeah, Rockefeller makes the first guy miss, but he's blowed up by number one. Is it number one there on the play? Uh, I don't have a number one here on my... Uh, stat sheet. Oh, my apologies. I take that back. Yes, I do. That will be wide receiver. One more. Sorry about that. One more comes away with a big tackle on that special teams play. Uh, Chicago Wildcats, that is, is in the three wide receiver set. Four formation. AT King on the center. Here's a hand off to J. Calvin Kim, and he's it. After picking up two yards on the carry, looks like he's brought down by a host of gladiators uh, from the defensive line. Looks like 97 and 93. Get names on those guys here in just a moment. And that would be 91, oh. Carl uh, Forgey. And so that was uh, Kira Roy, outside linebacker number 93, and that's number 97, outside linebacker Bo Nose. I, uh, single back formation, three wide receiver center, Chicago Rockets. Here's another handoff to uh, him. Jumps over, hurdles over guy, picks up three yards on the play before he's brought down. There by uh, Colin Douglas as he hits him. And <laughs> Jay Calvin Kim is, is talking smack, letting him know, hey, you got to come harder than that when you're coming to hit Jay Calvin Kim, buddy. 
Another three wide receiver set here for Chicago. They love their three wide receivers formation. Another trap formation there for Joe Cavett. He picks up the first down. Great running here by both running backs. As they're keeping the, 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 the down chain moving. It's a replay. Take a take a look at the replay here. J. Calvin Kim picks up the first down. Another three wide receiver set. E. T. King is in the uh, I'm sorry, four wide receiver set. E. T. King in the, in the shotgun. J. Calvin Kim is in the backfield with him. Three step drop. There's a bomb downfield. I. N. T. By who else? St. Louis Gladiators comes away with the INT there, and that is by Aaron Arrington. Aaron Arrington is a known cornerback here in the SFL who has been around ever since season six. And look at this interception here. He dive and catch, put his body on the line for the team, and he's hit after that reception. Great INT there by Aaron Arrington of the St. Louis Gladiators. Aaron Arrington spent time with the then went over to Mexico City, then back to the East. He has been around for quite some time, as I stated. And he showed his corner, uh, his covering coverage skill, that is. I formation type the formation we are here. Uh, hand off to Diaz. Makes a man miss, and he picks up eight yards there on the carry before he's brought down by Hendershot. This guy here is little, swifty, and can move. Second and two for the Gladiators. Chicago Wildcats coming out. There's a look at Kanye Rockefeller. He's been pretty quiet. Uh, there haven't been many pass plays here by the St. Louis Gladiators. They come out in a strong, tight formation. There's another handoff to Diaz. To down to the right, left side of the right side of the field. And he's going scrambling to the 10, 20, or the 30, 40. Brought down by Kanye Rockefeller, who came all the way across the field. He has 65 yards here on 6.5 yards of carry. There's another look at it here. Went outside but brought it right back through the middle. And this little guy is hiding behind the blocks and no one seems to find him. And as Kanye brings him down, nice run there by Diaz. Denzel Diaz in the backfield once again. I formation for the Gladiators. Tight formation. Looks like they're going hit run heavy here. Another uh, handoff to Diaz picks up six more yards there on the carry. Diaz is, seems to be making the first guy miss every time he touches the ball. I haven't seen the first guy bring him down just yet. This little guy is with him. There's a look there at AJ Barnes, veteran defensive back there for the Wildcats. Another power eye formation here for the Gladiators. There's a handoff to Diaz as he's brought down this time by the first man. Any shot comes away as he celebrates and dances as he gets the tackle for loss there. Looks like two yards on the on, on the loss for the Gladiators. Three wide receivers set. Split formation for the Gladiators. There's a one-step drop there by Alexander. Out pass to the receiver. Looks like it's incomplete. Pass intended for wide receiver Tristan Jones, but unable to stay in bounds on the play there. So it looks like uh, the Gladiators will be going for a field goal. And here's the field goal unit. And the kicker for the Gladiators is Graham Northbrook. And this here would be a... ...34-yard field goal. 35, that is. The kick is up. And the 35-yard field goal is good. Gladiators gets on the board first. 3-0 Gladiators over the Chicago Wildcats. I can't remember the last time I've seen the Wildcats here in the first quarter and they haven't pretty much moved the ball um, as they normally do. Well, second quarter, that is, we're in. And they haven't been really productive in the passing game as they're normally great as taking deep shots downfield. They just haven't been unsuccessful today. They just haven't been successful at all. Yeah. 
There's a return that brings it out to the 28-yard line. Return man is uh, Davius Reed, that is, on the return. Well, let's see if Chicago can come out and move the ball downfield consistently and not just picks up one fir first down and then, you know, three and out afterwards. Let's see if they can move the ball here as there's a look at E.T. King, who had a great season last year as he took the uh, – Wildcats to the SFL Championship. Split formation, one step drop. There's a pass to the tight end. As he's hit by Douglas. Brandon Nail, that is, on the reception there for the Wildcats. I like that formation, picking up eight yards on the play. I mean, that's great. You want to start off second and short, never second and long. Power out formation. There's a five-step drop swing pass here. Picks up a block there. E.T. King picks up maybe two yards on the play. Come up short, looks like third and inches. I say give it to King, let him run right up the middle and pick up a first down. But you never know with his ladder to defense who have been playing phenomenal thus far. May have second uh, uh, something to say about that. There's a look at J. Calvin Kim there. Single back, five-step drop screen pass. The J. Calvin Kim, he picks up the first down and makes a man miss there. Out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Chicago is moving the ball now. First and 10 at the Chicago 48. There's a look at the stats for King and Alexander. Jay Calvin Kim had a wide open field there. Missed tackle there by 24, and Aaron Arrington. You got to come up with that tackle there, son. Cannot miss, cannot afford to miss that tackle there with this team. Single back formation. Looks like the same formation here. Uh, same play. There's another screen pass. Out to J. Kevin Kim, and this time it's blown up by the cornerback. I'm oh, sorry, free, uh, free safety that is. Freeman Pilt here. Pilt tier, that is, on the tackle. Great tackle there for a two-yard loss. He read that screen pass all the way and was not fooled. Four wide receiver set here for the Wildcats. There's a five-step drop there by King. Over across the middle. Overthrown and complete. Third and 12. Pass intended for a tight end, Shan Varner. He was unable to come come up with the reception there. Et King overthrew the receiver, who was who had who was open, who could have caught the ball and picked up the first down. But now he's Chicago has to settle for a third and third and long as they come out in a four wide receiver set and one tight end on the field. Et King in the uh, uh, shotgun, empty formation, one step drop. He's going deep downfield, baby. There's a one handed catch. By the receiver, number 17, Kendall Gilbright, touchdown, Chicago, who answers right back fast after the Gladiators run downfield and kicks a field goal. Chicago, 6-3. And this is the Chicago Wildcats that I am used to seeing who know, who known for taking chances downfield. Look at this one-handed catch, folks. Wide open and was unable to um, come up with the tackle is Freeman Pilter there. The free safety for the Gladiators. Chicago strikes first in the uh, on the scoreboard with a touchdown, but St. Louis is on the board with three points of their own from the field goal earlier. Six minutes and 43 seconds left here in the second quarter. Chicago is sitting ready for the extra point. There's a snap. The kick is up. The extra point is good. This has been a good game so far here um, between Chicago and St. Louis. Great defense and, and great offense for both teams moving the ball up and down the field. And there's the kick there by Chicago. Return on the play out to the St. Louis 29-yard line by Jones. I'm sorry, uh, Tito Moss, that is. I thought it was Jones. Sorry about that.
Denzel Diaz, 12 carries, 5.7 yards, uh, 5 point yards a carry, 68 yards total on running the ball. Split back formation, three wide receiver set. There's a five step drop by Alexander. Swing, uh, out route pass to the running back, and he threw his hands. He did not catch that ball. I'm not sure if he heard, heard footsteps or he was just unable to bring the ball in. Here's another look at it, and he was open. He was wide open. He just was unable to come away with the catch there. As 23, cornerback Brandon Vassy was in the vicinity or in the area of 23, Denzel Diaz. St. Louis comes out in a high formation set. Normal. Diaz set in the far back of the backfield. So there's a snap. Alexander hands the ball off to Diaz. He makes a man miss. Picks up a block. There's Diaz running up the field. Hinder shot. Takes a shot at him, but he broke the tackle at the 20. 10. Touchdown. St. Louis. Who gets on the board after Chicago goes downfield with the bomb and, and Diaz comes away with a long touchdown of his own. Here is a replay of it, and here's a big block right there that sets him free. There's another block there, and Hendershot was in, the, in position to make the tackle, but was unable to come away with it as, as big boy <laughs> for Chicago, Donnie Odom, oh, tried to run down Diaz, but Diaz was just too fast, and Diaz broke free and came away with the touchdown. Wow, what a play by Denzel Diaz. St. Louis answers right back with great play. That just had excellent blocking. Diaz just had excellent blocking on that play, and he was able to take it to the house. Great run. Oh, six minutes and 23 seconds left here in the second quarter. Let's see if Chicago is going to answer right back. Are we going to go back and forth in this game or what? <laughs> as Aaron Arrington in the chat says, he calls Diaz Mighty Mouse. Is that the new nickname for this guy? <laughs> I would say yes if you ask me. And there's a kick here to Abbeus Reed. Makes a man miss up the middle. Almost takes the return back and he runs out to the 43-yard line. The kicker came away with the uh, with the tackle. If the kicker Graham North Northrup would not have been in that position to make that tackle, Davius Reed would have taken that return to the house. Here's a spin move. Juke gets skinny, and the kicker saves the day for the uh, for the St. Louis Gladiators. Wow, what a phenomenal play that was by the kicker by putting his body on the line for the team and not allowing that return. Here's a strong eye formation for the Chicago Wildcats. And there's a handoff to Joe Cavan Kim, who up the middle makes a man miss. And he runs backwards for a one yard loss. Here's the stats for both running backs Denzel Diaz, 139 yards and one touchdown. So far, here in the second quarter, running back picking up big yardage so far in this game. Chicago comes out in a uh, split back formation, three wide receivers set. That gets read at the bottom of the field, and there's a handoff to Jake Evan Campbell. He's popping it. Looks like the, the safety comes up and make the tackle. Safety Nick Daggs, that is, comes up to make the hit. And there's a look at Daggs. E.T. King comes on the shotgun formation. Uh, three wide, four wide receiver set that is with Kim in the backfield with him. Uh, one step drop. He's looks got plenty of day. There's a tip pass there by Dags, and he almost comes away with an INT as he breaks up on the deflection. Looks like Chicago will have to punt the ball away. Looks like the punter coming on the field. What a crazy game so far. I am almost out of breath as I am battling in. And gathering and getting over a cold <laughs> and my voice sound seems a little scratchy from the, that long run play there by 
by Diaz and the bomb there from Chicago earlier in the game. We just have two great plays that came away here. And there's the punt. Diaz on the return, but he gets nowhere. He's bought down as soon as he gets to his uh, <laughs> punt return. There's Lane there chopping his way at Diaz, letting him know you ain't going nowhere. Ten seven, the St. Louis Gladiators visiting the Chicago Wildcats. And the Gladiators is on top, and they come out on uh, the first possession of this drive in a strong formation. It's a strong eye formation. Then there's another handoff to Diaz. Mighty Mouse, as they call him in the chat, picks up six yards. As I stated earlier, he's always making the first guy miss. There's an injury update. Looks like uh, one of the tackles for the Gladiators will be out for this game with a hip point. There's a look there at Maurice Spurgeon, who has been pretty quiet, who is a veteran here in the SFL. Let's see if uh, Spurgeon can make some noise uh, for the defense here of the Wildcats. High formation. There's another inside handoff to Diaz. He hit by Hendershot. Not this time, as he loses a yard or two on the play. Great tackle there by Hendershot for the tackle for loss for the Wildcats. Third and six for. Third and six here for the St. Louis Gladiators. They come out in a three wide receiver set and a split back formation. There's a one step dot drop there by Alexander. Pass across the middle. Broken up with a pass deflection by Hendershot. Hendershot looks like he's a little gassed there, putting his hands on his knees. And the St. Louis special teams will have to come out on the field and punt this ball away. There's a punt. There's a punt. Return. He's smacked in the mouth. Smacked in the mouth is Kanye Rockefeller. By strong safety, Hootie Hawkins. Haskins, that is. Hootie Haskins comes away with the tackle on that special team play. Chicago Wildcats has the ball at their own 43-yard line. I formation. Two wide receivers and one tight end on the play. That's a two-step drop that is by King. And there's a swing pass to the fullback, and he's smacked in the mouth by Colin Douglas. These St. Louis Gladiators are not playing around with these Wildcats. They're smacking these guys around with these big hits. St. Louis said that we would not be looked and mocked this season we will play hard nose smack you in the mouth football gladiators in a 4-3 defensive formation and the wildcats are in a strong eye formation there's a swing pass or screen that is to shake out the kids he's popped in the mouth real hard by the by the inside linebacker carter cannon there wow these gladiators are laying some hits these guys are bringing the rodale today as my old youth football coach would say, <laughs> bring your ideal and drop the hats. 3-3 three, three formation for the defense in the nickel. There's a pass across the middle. Incomplete pass intended for Kendall Gilbright. Gilbert, sorry about that. Who could not keep his hands on the ball. A.T. King pretty much looking frustrated that the receiver was in position to pick up the first down but couldn't keep his hands on the ball. I can, under, I can understand the quarterback's formation, uh, sorry, frustration, that is. As he, I mean, the, the receiver was in great position to, to come away with the reception, but he was unable to keep his hands on the ball or keep the ball in his hand, should I say. Here's the punt here by Chicago. Malcolm Perian, that is, on the punt. And Diaz on the return makes one man miss. This guy always seems to make the first guy miss. As Diaz is brought down by Brandon now. Tight end for the Wildcats. First and 10 for the St. Louis Gladiators with 2 minutes and 43 seconds left at the St. Louis 24-yard line. 
Ladder, ladder is up 10 to 7 over the Wildcats. Wildcats comes out in a 4 3. Uh, there's an en encroachment. Screen pass here by St. Louis. Spin move, but did not pick up the first down. Hinder shot on the tackle. Well, let's see if St. Louis is going to accept the encroachment or they're going to decline it. Pretty sure they're going to decline it after picking up eight yards on that swing pass by Diaz. Second and two for St. Louis here. As the Gladiators comes out in a strong eye formation. The defense is in a 43 formation. Hand off to Diaz. He comes out wide. Makes a man miss. There's a missed tackle again. He's brought down by Ajuma Afolabi. The outside linebacker there. Look at Diaz, man, this guy here, he gets out wide, makes uh, Maurice Spurgeon miss the tackle as as Afolabi picks up the tackle there. This Diaz guy is is, is pretty swifty and, and loves making the first guy miss. Looks like a, a, a small uh, young man standing right here, but similar to Parky Chula of the SFL. Looks like they are down to the two-minute warning here. Gladiators 10, Wildcats 7. Other SFL action, Vancouver and Alaska. Alaska is up in that game at the two-minute warning as well. 17-3, Alaska for Vancouver. Here's a handoff hit to Diaz. He had open room down here toward the bottom of the field, but he decided to cut back inside and end the shot. Showed him what's not to do, and that's come my way. End the shot on the tackle. End the shot has just been all over the field. I mean, this guy is just vicious uh, at the outside linebacker he's not playing in the middle he's playing the, the, the left outside linebacker position but he's like from sideline to sideline and makes a tackle strong guy formation in the shot once again gets the tackle for loss on Diaz St. Louis here better smell what's cooking and that's hinder shot and start to run the ball the other way away from this guy maybe they can pick up some yards if they run toward the other side of the field and not towards this side here at Hendershot. St. Louis in a split back formation, three wide receivers set. Third and 12, do not want to be in third and long, and there's an out pass. Looks like they only pick up three yards on the play to Diaz, and St. Louis will have to punt this ball away with one minute and four seconds left on the clock uh, for the Wildcats, and I'm pretty sure that the Wildcats have all three timeouts remaining, if I'm not mistaken. Here's a punt here by the Gladiators. Kanye Rockefeller on the return, picks up maybe about 10 yards, and he's tackled at the Chicago 30 yard line.
Sorry, folks, I was muted, and I'm sitting here talking and going on. Sorry about that. Chicago is, has to settle for a field goal here. Not sure why they're going for a field goal on third and two. They could have took a shot downfield. Here's the kick. And it's good. A 51-yarder, that is, by Chicago. Booming straight down the middle. Great kick. Seven seconds left on the clock here in the first half. Yes, I am with you folks live. I am not muted. I was muted before, uh, but I am here. <laughs> As I stated earlier, I am now getting over a cold, so I did mute the mic to clear my throat um, <laughs> and forgot to unmute myself. Sorry about that, SFL Nation, but hey, your play-by-play -play commentator, DR Sam is here. And it uh, looks like that's DS. Not yes, on the uh, that's Jones that is, a uh, Moss. Let's get that correct. Moss that is on the return out to the 30-yard line of, of St. Louis, and there's three seconds on the clock. Let's see if St. Louis is just going to nail it here or just hand the ball off to Diaz. I wouldn't take a chance by throwing a pass or so. And St. Louis does comes out in a strong formation. All right, that is. There's a swing pass here to Diaz. Tries to juke and make a man move, miss. And looks like that is. Couldn't see who that is, who that was on the tackle. But hey, that's the half, folks. St. Louis Gladiators 10, Chicago Wildcats 7. I'm sorry, 10 all, that is. My apologies. As we go into the halftime. Here's your SFL halftime show. All right, folks, we're back to start the second half of the game here. As we get ready for the kickoff, St. Louis will be kicking the ball off to the Chicago Wildcats. The ball is on the tee. Boot it. Here we go with the second half underway. Here's a return by Davius Reed. And he smacked real hard. OMG. Man, that dude needs his mama after that hit. 91 of St. Louis. Carl Fargy. Man, that dude is straight up disrespectful. <laughs> what a hit. <laughs> Other SFL action Vancouver versus Alaska. Vancouver has scored a touchdown. The score over there is now 20 to 10. Uh, Alaska on top. That's a bell action here. 
Yeah, I'm your play by play commentator, Demond Simeon, here covering your St. Louis Gladiators versus the Chicago Wildcats. There's an out pass there to uh, Shane Varner. Or is that driver, am I mistaken? Keep getting those two mixed up. Driver is 89 and Varner is 88. Chicago comes out in a three wide receiver set. Split back formation. And the Gladiators are in a 3 3 nickel. There's a handoff to J. Cavan Kevin. That play was blown up from the start. Big 67 comes in on the tackle, and that is Scott LaRoe. Getting nasty in the backfield. Defense comes out in a 3 2 dime formation. Chicago has. Every wide receiver on the staff out there going deep is an E.T. King. And that's a reception there by Gilbert. Picks up the first down, Chicago. Gilbert had his man beat from the jump. So we take a look here at King strikes right down the middle. What a pretty pass that is. Nice spiral. And Colin Douglas was just unable to step, to keep step for step with Gilbert. As Gibbon was able to bring in the reception for the first down. Chicago comes out with a three wide receiver set in a weak formation. E.T. King calling the signal. J. Kevin Kim gets the handoff, breaks one tackle, and he tackled and brought down. Looks like by. Uh, Colin Douglas, that is, on the tackle. Three wide receivers, single back formation in Chicago. There's a two-step drop by King, another out route to his receiver. And he picks up uh, nine yards. Did they give him the first down? It looks like they gave him the first down on that play, but I don't think he picked up the first down. Zelly on the reception. I'm not sure if that was a first down, folks. You all let me know in the chats. Another look there at E.T. King is in a far, uh, far formation tight, that is. Looks like uh, King is calling signals. And there's a, another three-step drop out route. Out here to Shane Varner. Varner, that is, has been pretty active here in the uh, passing game on the out routes. Looks like uh, Chicago is baiting the um, Gladiators to, to come in and play in tight. Uh, press coverage, and then they try to strike you down the middle of the field on the outside, going deep on you. Another three wide receiver set. Here's King in his single back formation. Kim in the backfield. There's another out route to Gilbert to take the, up the catch, uh, makes a reception and picks up the first down on the play. Wow, he carried two guys across the first down line. Gilbert, that is. What a great catch and run by the receiver. Single back wing formation in Chicago. The defense is in a 43 formation. Five, seven step drop is King, and he's hit and brought down. Sacked by the defense. Biggins on the defensive play. Mo Biggins, that is, and he came in with Mo Better. Mo Biggins, Mo Sacks. King was unable to do anything on that play. Took a smack right in the mouth. Second and 16. Second and long. Three-step drop is King. Out route pass to looks like Driver, and he was unable to make the reception. Third and 16 for the Chicago Wildcats. This St. Louis defense is, is playing some hard-nosed ball. They're smacking the Wildcats around here. But bringing the boom, excuse me, bringing the boom all game. They have been laying the wood. On the Chicago Wildcats. Empty formation and King comes out with every receiver on the roster out on the field. 
three two dime is the gladiators going across the middle of the field there's a reception there by Alex Zeely, but he's unable to get across the first down line brought down by the defense 31 Nick Daggs saving the first down there look at this look at Daggs on that tackle there. Daggs had help with uh, Freeman uh, Piltier Peltier there on the tackle as well with with Dax. And it looks like Chicago is going to go for it. Fourth and one there. Inside enemy territory at St. Louis 16 16-yard 16 line. Split back formation is Chicago. Looks like King is trying to draw the defense offside and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Is he going to blow a timeout or is he going to keep it? Oh, it looks like he's going to blow the timeout and Chicago is going to settle for a field goal. Keeping you up on the other SFL action, Vancouver and Alaska are also playing on the SFL network on YouTube. And Alaska is up in that game 27 to 10. And here's the snap for the kick. Kick is up. And the 32 yard field goal kick is good. The kicker here is extremely happy as he is converted on two field goals today. I guess anytime a kicker can stay above 500 in the field goal attempt in May, March, he can always get extremely happy. I guess he has that right. There's another, there's a kickoff here by the Chicago Wildcats, and Moss is making a few men's misses. He runs out to the 33-yard line on that return. The receiver, Tito Moss, on the return, <laughs> made a few guys miss and could all, almost almost broke that return off toward the upper, to upper part of the field there. Here's a look at Denzel Diaz, 19 carries, 8.4 yards on 159 yards on the ground. Two wide receiver with a tight end in, this, in the uh, formation and a split back formation. There's a two step drop there by Alexander. Out route to 80, Tristan Jones. Tristan Jones picks up three yards, that is, on the play. Second and seven for the St. Louis Gladiators. Gladiators come out with two wide receivers set. There's a five-step drop there by Alexander. Uh, out route pass to Diaz, and he's tackled for a yard loss. There is urgent. It looks like Rockefeller in on the tackle as well. Nice play there for the secondary to come up and make the play. Third and six is the Gladiators. There's a swing pass out to Diaz. He picks up a few yards, that is, on the play. Picks up four. It's fourth and two. Looks like the Gladiators will have to settle for a punt here. Gladiators getting themselves set and ready to punt this ball away back to Chicago at their own 41 yard line. And there's the punt. Diaz with the, I'm sorry, Rock, Rockefeller that is, on the return, picks up maybe one or two yards on the return as he's brought down by Hoodie Haskins of the St. Louis Gladiators. 
Folks, with five minutes and six seconds left here in the third quarter between the St. Louis Gladiators and the Chicago Wildcats. The Wildcats are up 13 to 10 over the Gladiators as the Gladiators are in a 3-3 nickel formation. Chicago has three wide receivers to the top of the field with a single running back. And there's a pass deep post. Two receiver Davius Reed who has four receptions on, 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 on five targets. E.T. King throws a strike to the corner. As there was a crossing deep rod, uh, 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 a deep crossing uh, there by the receivers, and uh, Davius Reed was wide open uh, on that post corner route there. Chicago comes out with four wide receivers, and J. Calvin Kim in the backfield. Two step drop there by. By King and boom, blew up in the backfield. Tackle for loss. Jay Calvin Kim has not been productive since the mid mid of the second quarter. Looks like Chicago has gotten away from the run. Not sure why, because they're leading in this game. Second and 12 is Chicago. Four wide receivers set. King in a shotgun with Kim in the backfield with him. Two-step drop, King pumps. Looks like he's looking good. He has a lot of time, but he runs out of time. And the Gladiators comes up with a sack. Big boy on the tackle, and that's Kiroy Kohula. Outside linebacker. 93. Third and forever. King comes out with every receiver he has on the roster on the field. There's a three-step drop there by King in the shotgun. He has a man wide open. He's caught, but he's out of bounds. Unable to stay in bounds. And Chicago will have to punt the ball away. Had enough for the first down, but Gilbert was unable to catch the ball in bounds. Oh, Gilbert could just be beating himself up on the first down. Boy, it looks like Chicago is going to challenge this. I'm not sure, Coach. Looks like uh, Gilbert was out of bounds if you ask me. I'm not sure Gilbert was in bounds, but hey, here's a look at it. Here's a replay as the ref is underneath the challenging boot. I don't know what Douglas was thinking. Looks like he probably was in a cover too. And yeah, Gilbert was <laughs> way out of bounds. <laughs> the ref didn't have, have to stay underneath the boot for very long for this one. Figure this one out. If you ask me, that's a wasted timeout that could come back and hunt Chicago in the long run deep in the fourth quarter. I guarantee you that, that that Colin Douglas would never let the receiver get behind him like that again because Gilbert could have caught that thing inbounds and took that straight behind him. Here's Chicago on a punt. Oh, my, that was almost blocked by the Gladiators. And Diaz on the return, and he gets nowhere. I'm not, I, I don't think it's pretty safe to have your star running back returning punts here in the SFL because anything is bound to happen. And we've seen a lot of star players get hurt and the the player has to go out of the game and do not return. And that could just hurt your team as to uh, winning by having a star player out. The St. Louis Gladiators comes out in a power eye strong formation. Single receiver to the top of the field. Here's a handoff to Diaz. He comes out down towards the bottom of the field. And it's Hendershot on the tackle after Diaz has picked up seven. Diaz is averaging 8.3 yards per carry in this game. I tell you one thing, Hendershot has been a thorn in the side to Diaz. <laughs> because he has just been all over him all game. He seems like Hendershot is the only person who can run down and even grab and get a hold of him. Here's Diaz again on the handoff towards the top of the field. Picks up one yard on the play. Maybe not a yard at all. Probably got back to the line of scrimmage. And that's Hendershot again on the tackle. Hendershot is out here shedding, ta shedding blocks and getting all these tackles and just all over the field. 
Power eye formation once again here for the St. Louis Gladiators. There's a five-step drop screen pass that is. Uh, spin move there by the running back Diaz. And no, he does not even, he, they say he picks up a yard, but it doesn't look like he picked up a yard. And he's brought down by Ajumai off a lobby. Ajumu. Ajumu off a lobby. There's the punt by the Gladiators. Kanye Rockefeller on the return. Picks up three yards on the return. He's tackled and brought down by a host of Gladiators. Chicago takes over on their own 23-yard line with one minute and 46 seconds left in this uh, third quarter. Chicago comes out with three wide receivers to the top of the field. Looks like Zilli is down here at the bottom all by his lonesome. Empty backfield. King is in the shotgun all by himself. And there's a pass from Matthew Sweet. And he makes a few people juke him. He runs back, but he picks up four yards on the play. E.T. King, 216 yards passing. One passing touchdown and two interceptions in this game he has thrown. Chicago comes out with a shotgun formation, three wide receivers, and then two running backs in the backfield with E.T. King. King calling the signal. There's a three-step drop. King throws a bomb down the side of the field, and it's broken up by Colin Douglas. Colin Douglas was step for step with the man Gilbert. This time, he did not allow Gilbert to get behind him, and he was able to, able to come away with the pass deflection. Douglas played this uh, post-corner route. To, to expertise here as he was able to get his hands on the ball and deflect the pass. There's a look there at Colin Douglas once more. 13-10 is the Chicago Wildcats over the St. Louis Gladiators here with one minute and 12 seconds left in the third quarter. E.T. King has four wide receivers on the field along with the tight end running the okie doke. King going deep. The bias is deflected by, by Dax as that play is broken up and Chicago has to settle for another punt. Dax on the pass deflection and that was a great Breaker by the strong safety, Nick Daggs. If Daggs is not there, that pass is completed as, T as, as King tried to go deep for his attendant receiver. There's the punt. Uh, Moss on the return he makes a guy miss. It's like Diaz. Diaz on the return. I keep forgetting that Diaz is returning the punts and Moss is returning the kick returns. As Aiden Friday says in the chat, he says our secondary is dirty. They are pretty dirty. Uh, four three form uh, four three uh, formation for the defense. Our eye is the offense, and Diaz gets skinny and picks up two yards. Guess who's on the tackle? It wasn't Hinder shot this time, <laughs> but it was Awful Abi, the outside linebacker of the Wildcats. Wildcats comes out in a four three. Looks like their press formation. Our eye is the Gladiators. Diaz picks up four yards on the play there. Off a of lobby on the tackle once again. These outside linebackers for Chicago are pretty good. These guys are making tackles from sideline to sideline. Third and four, which is third and manageable for the Gladiators as they're at their own 46-yard line. 13-10 is the score with six seconds left here in the quarter. Three wide receivers, single uh, split that formation. There's another hand off the field. He's blown up in the backfield. Big number 94 on the tackle, Chris Zemiski on the tackle. Great tackle there. 
great penetration, should I say. Uh, send your, send your speed. Gather there to come up with the attack of the boss on Diaz. Or should I say Diaz got back to the line of scrimmage. Here's the punt by St. Louis. There's a spin move by Rockefeller. Makes one guy miss. Gets out to the 20-yard line of Chicago. Rockefeller's a little frustrated with himself for not breaking that last tackle. Here Chicago comes out in a eye formation, strong eye, strong power eye that is. Here's a handoff to Jay Cavan Kim. He's blowed up in the backfield for a tackle for loss. And that's Mo Biggins on the tackle for the St. Louis Gladiators. Split back tight formation, one wide receiver in for the Chicago Wildcats. King looks towards the middle of the field, picks up Barner, a driver that is. A driver picks up seven yards on the play. Third and four is Chicago Wildcats. Here we are, folks, in the fourth quarter. Ten minutes to be exact left in this game. Chicago up 10, I'm sorry, 13-10 uh, over the Gladiators. Two wide receivers. Strong eye formation is the Wildcats. The defense jumps off sides. There's a seven-step drop by King. Throws an out route to Diggs. I mean, not Diggs. I meant to say um, Zilly. Looks like Zilly picks up the first down, so... I expect for them to, most likely they are probably will accept the neutral zone fraction, and they do accept the penalty. Picks up the five yards instead of just the four. And I think I would have declined the penalty and picked up the six yards that Zilly picked up on the play, or maybe Zilly stepped out of bounds. Split back, tight formation. Or the Wildcats. Uh, Gladiators showing blitz. Two step drop is your quarterback, and that pass is deflected away by the secondary of the Gladiators. These guys here are balling. They're not allowing Chicago to continue to go deep. And that is Freeman Peltier on the uh, deflection, that is, for the Gladiators. Right. Chicago comes out, second and 10. They come out in a three wide receiver set. Gilbert here at the bottom. Single back is J. Calvin Kim. And there's, a, there's a toss pass to Kim. He picks up two yards, one yard on the play. Did not get any type of penetration. And Dax come up to make the tackle from the strong safety position along with Cannon. I like how Chicago comes out with every wide receiver on the boss, and there's a tip pass, and it's intercepted by Hootie Hoskins. Hootie Haskins, that is, <laughs> on the reception, on the INT, and the Gladiators are knocking on the door of the Chicago Wildcats. Hootie Haskins on the deflection. Was that Colin Douglas on the, who got the, I couldn't see. Looks like Douglas did get his hand on the ball, and Haskins Runs the ball all the way back to the opposing side of the field. And he's tackled by one of the deep offensive linemen. And brought down inside of the red zone. Gladiators knocking on the door here. Trying to take the lead. They're first and goal here on the four-yard line. They come out in a power eye formation. 
Diaz is a far back. There's a five-step drop swing pass. Diaz gets the ball. Kanye makes the tackle, but it's too late. Touchdown, Gladiators. They're up 16 to 13 over the Wildcats. Denzel Diaz on a swing pass here. And Kanye Roxafella just gets to him at the one-yard line, but unsuccessful to come down with the tackle before Diaz was able to get into the end zone. This game here has been awesome so far. I am enjoying the call. It's been back and forth. I want to say we may have had four to five lead changes so far in this game. It has been bananas. St. Louis 17, Chicago 13. Here with eight minutes and 33 seconds left in the game. Here in Chicago. There's a return and a spin move there by Davius Reed makes one guy miss, but he's brought down at the Chicago 30-yard line with 8 minutes and 29 seconds left during this game. First and 10, Chicago. Let's see if E.T. King is going to take another shot downfield. See if he's going to continue to be aggressive here after that pass deflection uh, tip drill INT. Three wide receiver bunch to the top of the field. J. Kevin Kim is a single back. One step drop is King. Kim on a swing pass. Picks up one yard on the play. And he's brought down by a host of gladiators. And looks like that's Q Roy Kahula on the on the uh, on the tackle there. Uh, only allowing Kim to pick up one yard. There's E.T. King stats. Three interceptions. This is unlike King. Throwing three interceptions in one game. Not sure if we've ever seen King throw this many INTs in one game. There's a handoff to Kim, but it's blown up in the backfield. And that's Kahula again. Kilroy Kahula getting tackles for loss. Three wide receivers said in Chicago. Split back formation. King calling the signal. 3-3 three, three, nickel formation is the defense. And there's an out route to Davis Reed. Makes a man miss on the spin move. Picks up another two yards on the play. Fourth and two. Great defense there by the, glad the Gladiators for not allowing, or should I say for, for, uh, for stopping Chicago from picking up the first down. Great job there by the secondary after the, 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 the spin move of uh Davius Reed and now allowing him to pick up that first down. Don't let him get that point. It was uh, Carter Cannon on that tackle of Davius Reed. There's the punt. Diaz was unable to make a guy miss as he juked, but he's hit. Looks like it was J. Calvin Kemp on the tackle. I'm not sure why he's on special teams. I did see a number 20. <clears throat> and we have the St. Louis Gladiators coming out in three wide receivers. Split back formation. Ethan King underneath the center calling the signal. There's a one-step drop. Swing pass out to the running back. He has uh, tries to make the spin, but una unsuccessful to make Kanye Rockefeller miss. But Kanye Rockefeller, along with Brett Tillius, Tillis, I'm sorry, Tillis comes away with the tackle. Second and seven is the St. Louis Gladiator. Split back formation with three wide receivers set. Ethan King underneath the center. I'm sorry, Ethan Alexander, that is. There's a five-step drop, swing pass once again to Diaz, and he's blowed up. Looks like Tilius once again. No, it's not Tilius. It's off a lobby. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. Ophalabi? Is it Ophalabi or Ophalabi? It's one of those two. I'm sorry for butchering it if I am. 
Alexander under the center. Once again, looks like they're in the same formation. Split back. Three wide receiver set. There's a one-step drop. He's jumped on this, this swing pass. He's unsuccessful with it. Fourth and seven is the Gladiators. I don't know why they, they threw the ball on three consecutive plays. And they're all with swings. Unsuccessful with the swing. They should have taken a, uh, um, a shot downfield or towards the middle of the field. And St. Louis have to set up for a punt. And that punt is almost blocked as Chicago brought pressure. Rockefeller here on the return. Makes a guy miss this Rockefeller. Picks up maybe about four yards there on the return. Kanye Rockefeller is a well-known veteran here in the SFL. Been around the league ever since season six uh, as he was drafted number one in the uh, expansion draft by the Houston Hyenas back in season six. Spent three seasons with Houston and then came over to Chicago uh, last season. St. Louis looks like they're showing blitz. There's a swing pass out to Jay Kevin. Kim picks up the first down. It's Kim, but he's only... Uh, brought down after picking up the first down. And that's Kahula on the tackle. Great to see J. Calvin Kim getting back into the swing of things here as he uh, gets the reception and picks up the first down. Not sure why Chicago has pretty much abandoned the run. You know, Kim was picking up, you know, good yardage in the first quarter, but Chicago just most definitely got away from the run and has not been with the run since the middle of the second second quarter. As we hear with only four minutes and 52 seconds left in the fourth quarter, three wide receiver bunch at the bottom of the screen. There's a five-step grab by King, and he throws an incomplete pass as he was wrapped up by Manny Eisenhower. Manny Eisenhower bringing the pressure from the defensive tackle spot. Looks like this is a near formation, a far formation it is. Uh, J. Kevin Kim gets the handoff, picks up only three yards on the play. Third and seven. Sure, this is not where Chicago wants to be on this on uh, <clears throat> on this side of the ball. Looking at third and seven, you would want to be third and short, but they are in enemy territory. 3-2 dime formation is the St. Louis Gladiators. Empty formation. Shotgun is Chicago with all of their receivers on the roster. There's a strike down the middle of the field. Gabby is, you know, I take it back. That is um, the receiver, Tyler Baker, generic receiver that is on the play. Coming up big for Chicago on a post route down the middle of the field. Freeman Peltier on the tackle. The free safety for the St. Louis Gladiators. Strong eye formation in Chicago. Two wide receivers along with one wide one tight end. There's a handoff to Jake Kevin Kim, but it's punched up and he loses a yard on the play. I couldn't see who got to him, but I guarantee you this. There was a host of gladiators there waiting for him. 67 Scott uh, uh, LaRoe comes up celebrating looks like he probably was the first one to uh, the ball carrier on that play second and 11 chicago at st louis 27 yard line four wide receivers on the on the on the formation cam in the backfield with king king calling signals and there's a catch on the middle of the field on the post route to read third and two st louis has to toughen up this defense in the middle of the field here to keep Chicago from moving the ball. Two minutes and 58 seconds left in this ball game here or at St. Louis 18-yard uh, line in Chicago. And St. Louis is in a 4-3 formation. Chicago comes out with two wide receivers in the tight end and hand off to Kim, and he did not get the first down. J. Calvin Kim was stopped by Bo Biggins. Or Mo Biggins, that is, my apologies, on that play. 
And Chicago looks like they're going to settle for a field goal. If it was me, I would go for it. I would not settle for the field goal because you, that's only going to put that's going to put you down by one point. And that's say if you do not get the onside kick, then what happens? And there's a kick. Looks like they tried to go for it. They tried to do a fake field goal, and that was blown up by St. Louis. Number 56 of St. Louis comes away with the tackle, and McKillen on the tackle there of the uh, the, the backup quarterback. Of uh, Jamison Ho Holmes. Wow, what a defensive stop by the St. Louis Gladiators. This would be a big upset for the Gladiators over the Chicago Wildcats. And the Wildcats is in a 4 3 uh, formation of defense, and uh, Denzel Diaz picks up two yards on the play. Diaz has been pretty much the bread and butter here for this Gladiators offense. 179 uh, rushing yards total for one touchdown. Also a touchdown in the passing game because we have on a swing pass on the game, uh, and the goal line uh, and red zone on the uh, Chicago goal line, shall I say. There's a look here at Hendershot of Chicago. Two minute warning. Defense in a 4-3 type formation. Looks like they're showing good from the outside. Hit the shot comes in. But uh, hand off to Diaz, and that's blown up by double A outside linebacker Chicago. Oh, follow B on the tackle. Three wide receiver set is the Gladiators. Split back formation. One minute and 57 seconds left here in the game. Third and 10. There's another handoff to Diaz. He had room outside, but he brought it back in, and it's stopped in the backfield. Tackle for loss once again by this great outside linebacker core of the Chicago Wildcats of Hendershot and Off Lobby. Now follow B on the tackle. And St. Louis have to settle for a punt. Fourth and ten. They did not even gain a yard on that possession. And it looks like St. Louis is running down the play clock and the game clock as well before they uh, kick the snap. And there's the snap for the punt. And Rockefeller Jukes makes a man miss. Picks up uh, maybe two, three yards in the carry as he's talking about hosting that in. Here's a look at E.T. King as he has his guys come out to the uh, to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers set, split back formation on the running backs. There's a pump fake by King, strike down the middle. It looks like Driver, oh, well, I'm sorry, Zilly on the reception. And they're in the, uh, they're, <laughs> they're on the other side of the field in St. Louis territory. Clock is still ticking, 54 seconds. King swing pass through Jake Havin Kim. He gets out of bounds after picking up two yards from the swing pass reception. Great and smart play by King to get out of bounds on that swing pass. And this is when Chicago is dangerous. As the clock stops to save time for Chicago, three wide receivers set, two to the top of the field. Jay Calvin Kim single back. You have Shane Varner in the uh, tight end slot. And there's an out route here to Gilbert. Down towards the bottom of the field, Gilbert, Kendall Gilbert has been playing these sidelines to, <laughs> as a master uh, down here during the entire game. He has been working these sidelines, both sidelines, shall I say. Chicago comes out in another, and it comes out in a two wide receiver set, two tight ends, and, well, one tight end, shall I say, and Jake Cavan came in the backfield. There's a three-step drop going down deep. Passes tip, almost interception by Dags. Dags was able to get his hands on the ball, couldn't come away with it, but he'll settle for the pass deflection. 
one thing about A.T. King is that he's a gambler. And he'll stand in there and he'll he'll take a strike or two. Three wide receivers to the top of the field. And we have Gilbert down here at the bottom of the field. Lonesome. Uh, I shotgun formation pass towards the middle of the field. Did not pick up the first down. They say he has the first down, but he, I, I don't see that he, he crossed. If I was, uh, I think that they should challenge this. But that stops Chicago from moving forward. And the clock still moves. Chicago is unsuccessful to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Oh, that oh, it was that was fourth down. It's St. Louis ball. My apologies. So I was right. He did not pick up the fourth down. I mean the first down, but St. Louis comes away with the ball. It looks like they're gonna take a knee. And St. Louis is gonna come away with the ball game here. Not sure why Chicago didn't didn't kick the ball. I would have I would have went for the field goal. Chicago blew the game. Well, if they would have kicked the field goal, they still wouldn't have won. But I, I understand why they went for it. But not understanding why he threw the ball underneath instead of taking a shot downfield going deep or working the sidelines. Yeah, that, that play was crazy. But there's your ball game, folks. St. Louis comes away with the victory. 17-13 upsetting the Chicago Wildcats. Gladiators come up big. Well, folks, there it is. That's the game as the St. Louis Gladiators up to the Chicago Wilds at 17-13. I was your play-by-play -play commentator and host, Ron Singer. See you next week.